Hello, and welcome to part five of building a CMDB integration. My name is Nick Ryan, and today we are going to get into the business of actually starting to use the integration hub ETL and building out our actual mappings from our staging data sources into the CMDB. So what have we done so far? So in part four, we actually created our integration hub actions to query the Calm Gateway. We then uh, used data sources with custom scripts to call those integration hub actions, and we parsed apart some data um, to then be used within our ETL processes. So today, we're going to start the building process here in Integration Hub ETL. So what does that mean? Well, we've done most of the steps so far in terms of defining this application. And now we're going to finish out this and start bringing some data into the CMDB. So the primary steps are the, the first time, this is really a one-time thing, is the first uh, transform that we are going to set up, we're going to uh, create a new CMDB application as part of that. Uh, after we do that, then we'll start to transform some of the data for each of the data sources. We'll start to map that into um, our various tables, and then we'll create the import schedules and, and show you how to do some testing uh, at each step along the way. And so we are going to talk about some of the more nuanced aspects throughout this. So um, under step number two there, a very important concept to understand as part of this will be the source native key. So when we actually get into um, the building process, we'll, we'll explore what source native keys are in more depth. So at this point, too, you should have your um, source analysis document, hopefully, because this is going to show us what from the source uh, fields are going to go into which tables and to which attributes in those tables. And if we want to do any transformations on that or set anything explicitly, um, those should be noted as well. So let us hop into service now. So if you navigate to the Integration Hub ETL, uh, you can open that up. So this one right now doesn't have anything defined in it. So we're going to start out and create our first one. So if you've actually loaded any service graph connectors, those would actually show up in that list because this is the same tool which we internally use to create service graph connectors. So first step here is going to be to specify some of these specific or uh, the basic details. This is where we're going to go ahead and create a new application name. So let's call it now Song Gateway. And in, uh, in the, the third episode of this series, we actually talked about the discovery source. So we went ahead and created it at that point in time. So hopefully yours is already in here as well. And let's just call this Kong. Uh, we could give it all kinds of other names if we want, but uh, call it whatever you want. Usually it will identify and be tightly correlated with the data source that you're going to use as well. But we can say load data from um, gateway device. And then we can navigate to our data source that we created in part four of this series. So here's our Kong gateway data source. You do have the option of um, using specific import sets if you're uh, uh, tweaking that or not. So let's go ahead and mark this as complete. When you mark it as complete on this first time on this first step, it's actually going to go out and create some more records that won't happen um, after this because we're going to continue to use this application over and over. So we had that, and then it should have gone out and retrieved the new import set for us. So if you're connected to uh, your third-party data source, it should go query that for you. Let's see if 
we've got some data in here. So yeah, during my test run, it actually created an import set. So here we can see that we've actually got data in here um, for this particular data source. At this point, if we wanted to, we could do any number of transformations. But let's say I just want to um, set a fixed column value because I didn't have something that uh, told me that this was uh, operational at the point that we imported. But I'm going to make the assumption that if I'm actually able to query this, then it's operational. This is just an example of potentially how to set uh, a static field here that we can then use in our in our mappings. So we'll we'll get into some more complicated examples of transforms and some of the subsequent mappings. But for now, let's go ahead and accept that. Uh, the third step is to start to pick our CMDD classes that we want to map. So here we're just going to do a basic class. Um, we'll get into some scenarios with conditional classes and other mappings, but right now we're just going to do a basic class. So let's find our column gateway. That in. And here, let's go ahead and set up the mapping. So this is the part where we're going to start talking about source native keys. And so the attributes that show up here, there's always going to be these top two that show up the source native key and a recency timestamp, um, which are not actually columns on the, this CI class, but they are used in the sys object source table um, as basically a level zero type of identification rule. And so um, when that identification and reconciliation engine processes, it's going to first look at that sys object source table and try to match a source native key for this class and this data source. Remember, ours in this case was now dash calm GW. Um, so for that data source feed in, in this particular class, it's going to try to look for that. Uh, the other thing that it brings in by default is any identifiers as specified by identification rules. So here the ID uh, is the only identifier on this class, so it, it uh, Sets it according to that. So here, for the source native key, I'm actually going to use our connection and credential alias. Because to me, the gateway uh, should be unique to this connection that we specify. And there shouldn't, we can't really specify two different gateways from the co same connection and credential alias. Now, could you change it uh, down the road? That certainly could happen. And uh, this would potentially have problems and, and instead of create a new one, uh, would actually update this one if we stick with this. But for our purposes, I'm going to work off of the assumption that uh, the connection ID actually represents a unique uh, and unchanging gateway. So we're going to pick some additional columns here. I want this admin URL. I want a, I know that there's a database type in here. You know, database type. I've got a version somewhere down in here. You know, we want to capture the version of the gateway that's running version. I'm going to go ahead and get the name. Give it a name. And let's go ahead and do a description as well. So it, whichever other attributes you want besides those of, for the identification rule, uh, if there's multiple identification rules, it actually shows you all those attributes as well. Um, but you just select and add those so we don't bring in all 100 plus uh, attributes for, for a CI. It's just you have to go and pick the ones that you actually want. So here, it's really just drag and drop. You start uh, mapping these in. and um, quickly finish up a mapping here actually and and one nice thing is you're if you're mapping through here and, and you see something you're like well this doesn't really nothing looks like it fits my purpose for like a name I don't see anything over here that looks like a really good name 
we can actually click up here to transform and let's say let's create a new transform based on one of these existing source columns and so I'm going to choose there's many in here and they give you a nice little description of what they do but let's go ahead and concatenate something together so let's say uh, we'll just call it the gateway gateway name. So my first one, let's say we'll use host name. Um, actually, I don't want to add make those together. So yeah, I actually have to do this. Like what I need to do first is I want to set it with a, a static value. I don't want to concatenate two existing ones. So I'm going to set a fixed value here. I'm going to call it Kong. So there's our static value. And now I can actually uh, concatenate a couple fields together. Here, this one was the prefix. I'm going to do prefix and post name. <clears throat> and let's put a, maybe an underscore in there. And when you click apply, then we've got our new name here. And we can go back to our mapping and simply use that, our name. The last one here, I'll just use this tagline value. All right. So now we've mapped that. I don't have any other classes I want to map as part of this particular transformation, so I'm going to mark this as complete. <clears throat> so relationships, we're not going to establish at this point. Um, there will be relationships to the gateway for sure, but we're not going to uh, establish them as part of this, so I'm just going to leave that blank and mark it as complete. Then we can do a test. Click Run Integration, and we should see that we've got one class being mapped, one new record being inserted, because I only have the one. You can see any error logs or, or just all the general activity, and you can review uh, the attribute values loaded in for this. And so that all looks pretty good to me. We can actually say Mark Complete. It'll ask if we want to roll this back. Uh, but this data looks good to me, so I'm going to say, let's go ahead and keep that data in the CMDB. So now that data is actually loaded into the CMDB. And at this point, we can schedule this. Uh, I'm going to come back to the scheduling because we're going to have a few few of these to do. Um, and so at this point, we've really got this gateway, and it's ready to, to go. So my handy dandy uh, source analysis tells me that the next thing I should do is the workspaces. So let's go look at the workspaces tab. Doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot to map there, but let's see. And this is actually a good use case because this is a non CMDB table, uh, but it is related. So if we were to come and look at the class manager and let's look up the Kong gateway. And let's look at these identification rules. One of the related entries here is Kong workspaces. So this is going to allow me to effectively create a related list, but also not uh, duplicate things because I don't want duplicate workspaces in there. So it's going to say for this gateway, uh, use the ID as kind of a lookup value for workspaces. So let's create a new one of these. Set. So we're going to use the now Kong Gateway application, and I'm going to say Kong workspace load data from Gateway about workspaces, and we can find 
workspace. And there's our Kong workspaces data source. That this is complete. That should be going and again pulling in an import set if we needed. So that we, we click preview. There it is. So it went and found a, my connection. I've only got one uh, workspace, as we saw uh, before when looking at the GUI for Kong, and it's, it's the default workspace. So uh, at this point, uh, let's see, I'm just going to mark that as complete. I don't think we need to really do any mappings here on that. Um, what I do need to do here, though, is um, make sure that I'm associating this to the correct Kong gateway. So I'm going to need a Kong gateway in here and, of course, our Kong workspace class, our table. So here in the mapping for Kong gateway, really the only thing I need to do is specify this source native key because I don't want to update it, this table with anything. I just want it to be sure that it associates it. So if I specify the source native key, which remember was just our connection and credential alias, um, then it'll do a lookup and associate to this particular gateway as I'm loading in these workspaces. And so I want to class in. So let's set up the map in here. And uh, my ID, so actually this payload returned an ID specific to Kong, which we can use here because this is a Kong specific table. There's not another data source that is gonna update this. And so um, this ID value is specific to Kong and this workspace. And so I can use it for both the source native key and the ID value. Here um, we can say that we want to just associate it with that Kong gateway that we already mapped. And the last thing I'm going to do here is add the name value. So in here, and so we should have that data loaded up. Go ahead and activate this. I have to associate it actually with my gateway here as well. So this is a, a non-CMDB association to an actual CI class. So I'm going to mark that as complete. Again, here there's no relationships as such. This is actually a reference. And there's a reference between the workspace to that uh, gateway. Last up, let's test it out. Two classes maps, gateway didn't really update anything because we just used the source native key. But then the workspace here, we can see default, it's associated to this gateway that we used and the ID and so on. So that all looks good. Let's go ahead and retain that. So again, I'll hold off on the import sets, but at this point in time, let's go ahead and take a look at our Kong gateway. Let's see what that like. So here's our one gateway. And I haven't pre-configured any of these forms, so it might not be a whole lot here. Um, but let's configure the related list for this. Just to make sure that we're getting our workspaces associated how we want. I'm going to take these couple off here. This here, let's look at um, gateway. This one. Fair enough, here's our Kong Gateway and the one default workspace here. So off to a good start there, come back, and we're ready to do our next mapping. So 
here. Let's come back to the summary, see what's order. So it says let's do a load balancer. All right. So back in and create more. Let's use now Kong Gateway again. And we'll say this is going to be Kong load balancers. And we know that they're all called SG Kong. And so here's SG Kong load balancers. Save. Mark it's complete. Again, the first time it's doing these, it's actually creating some extra records um, about the uh, gateway or the uh, the actual ETL itself. Get that, Let's dismiss all these, check out our data. There's not much in here, so, uh, and again, I don't think that there's a lot that we need to worry about this. Um, it's always important, you know, in all of our data sources, we were passing the connection alias ID in here, which is obviously key for us tying this back to uh, the proper gateway. Again, we are going to specify that gateway. Do that as our load balancer class. That. Our gateway. Again, don't need to really do anything except for specify this source native key value so it knows which one we need to find. And here we're going to actually associate our ID on both the source native key. Remember, we're not using the connection and credential alias ID. This is an ID that is actually returned from the payload specific to um, finding the load balancer. So important to be distinction to keep in mind there. Uh, <laughs> Make sure we're not slapping. And they're really the only other uh, couple pieces of information that we have here is there's an algorithm value I see and the name. So just drag and drop, wasn't much to transform here. Name. So this one is complete as far as the mappings go. And this one we actually are going to set up a relationship. So um, our parent is our gateway, child is the load balancer. And it automatically populates this in because it's a depend the load balancer has a dependent relationship on the gateway, so it automatically populates that in. Um, if it wasn't dependent, this is just a suggested relationship, it might bubble out, but um, you'd, you'd be able to pick your own. But here, it's dependent, and so we're going to go ahead and add that relationship so that the IRE uh, is happy when we actually pass this payload to it. Got that. We can test this out. Again. We had two classes, although the gateway didn't have much there. Uh, the load balancer um, was really what we wanted here. It created a relationship between them and created just the one new load balancer because that's all I have running on my gateway at this point in time. Mark that complete. We'll retain this data. And if we come back in here and we reload this form now, actually you should see uh, relationship form. Open up this dependency view. Up here. Yeah. So here our dependency view shows that we've got our gateway and it's related to the load balancer. Swap out the uh, the new and the old form there. So we're done with our loading the Kong load balancers and now as we see in our mapping form, we have a number of other ones to go through and do. So 
I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to go out and create these, but we will come back and talk about them. But for the sake of uh, time and speed, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, so now we're back and we have all of our data sources completed and we've associated those now with an ETL definition. And so at this point, we actually have completed our CMDB integration. So we've got our eight uh, ETL definitions, which are powered at the very beginning by these eight integration hub actions, either just the rest calls, which then feed these eight data sources. And I'm gonna come back to the schedules, but if we, the last step that we didn't do as we were going through each of these definitions was actually creating the schedule. And so we can open these up, come in and, and click this last step to set an import schedule. What this does is actually if you click on this, it's gonna up, open up the uh, job schedule form with a preset filter uh, for the specific data source. So you'll see there's a data source and this data source is the one you specified in the ETL definition at the beginning. Um, so this SG column gateway data source. So you could go through and do this for each one if you want. And then, you know, to make everything look nice, you can click the mark complete and then everything shows up with the, the checkbox next to it if you want. Um, or uh, what's a little bit easier to me is if you just come into the, the scheduler and um, add each one here. And what you notice is in the case of our import for the Kong gateway is they need to run in a specific order. Uh, if we went back to our source analysis, I actually include an import order. Some of these could run in, in parallel uh, and a lot of integrations can have things run in parallel, but uh, for the most part, uh, I need them to happen in sequence. So the first one is the gateway and then the workspaces need to be loaded after that. So you see it has uh, runs after the parent of the Kong gateway and so on. Then the load balancers need to run after the workspaces, the targets after the load balancers. The services can also be triggered after the load balancers, the routes after services, consumers after routes and plugins last because the plugins actually make reference to consumers, routes and services. So those obviously need to be loaded first. Um, but once you have that loaded, then we can actually uh, come into the very first one. And this is really the only one that you need to schedule. I have it just to run once, but if you want it to run every day, you can. We can just execute that now, and then it will uh, go and, and do a fresh import. And then what we have at the end of this is actually our Kong Gateway loaded with all those relationships. Refreshes here, and you see that all these relationships are here down to certain levels. I've got the related list of workspaces and consumers and plugins uh, that make reference to things. And I, we'll actually go back and look at these in more detail um, in another session. But at the end of the day, this data model that we looked at back in part two of this series um, is now being fully populated the way that we want it to. These related tables over here uh, are also being populated. And we've done all this using our pipeline of the actions to the data sources to the integration of ETO, at which point we did the transforms, the mappings, set up relationships and did some testing. And our CMDB is being populated at this point. So the last step uh, that I would say is important to do, um, you can go through and activate these um, if you want, like you'll notice all our service graph connectors do that. Um, but we also don't want to lose our work. So remember to come back in to the App Engine Studio. Uh, once this opens up, we will choose our now Kong GW application and think that to the source code repository that we have it linked to. As I 
changes. Go through and look at all those if we want, but I'm just going to assume that they are correct. And commit all those. All right, so at this point, we are done and have built our CMDB integration. I will have one more bonus uh, video where we'll go in depth into some of these transforms um, that you didn't see me build out, and we'll look at some of the advanced scripting that can be done in there and how to do set up some relationships and things like that. Um, but for now, Thank you for watching and good luck in building your integration.